coming up on Chasing the Sun. We head into the backwaters near Panama City Beach and are seeing red. Red fish, that is. There he is. Golly, did you see that? Look at that. He crushed it right there. When you pick these fish up like this, they almost just relax. First stage is all sun wash. It's done with, with a detergent. We'll run that through uh, for about 10 minutes. Oh man, I tell you what, that sun is starting to poke back out, and these redfish are excited. He's biting them teeth out. I tell you, you can keep your fingers clear of them teeth right there. This area was so great for the redfish tournaments. It was an untouched area. It was great, and it's still great. Visit Panama City Beach. AFCO, American Fishing Tackle Company. Yozuri, fish the best. Costa Del Mar, see what's out there. High's Toggery, premium clothing for men and women. And by Yeti Coolers, built for the wild. One of the most popular species in the Florida Panhandle is redfish. They're constantly on the move and just finding them is part of the fun. Hitting the water with Justin is Steve Bachman, one of the area's premier inshore guides. We're here in Panama City Beach this morning. I got one of my good buddies, Steve Bachman here, is also one of the premier flats guides in Panama City, and uh, we're gonna see if we can't go chase down a, a redfish. Today, they'll be sight fishing in the miles of backwater. We got an extremely high tide, so the fish ought to be in tight, if not in the marsh. So oh, cool. we'll fish tight. Yeah. Uh, we'll start off probably with a little bit of top water and uh, see how that bite is. That usually lasts until the sun gets up a little bit. It's yeah. starting to get up right now, but uh, once that ends, then we can uh, fire it into the cover with some weedless rig plastic. You know, when most people think about Panama City Beach, you know, they think of the beaches, that pretty green, clear water. Um, but we do have a very expansive bay system, as you can see out here. There's a lot of backcountry marshes, and it's kind of neat when the water gets high like this. I love it when the fish will get all back through the grass and stuff. And when you got a little skinny water skiff like this, you can pull us back in there and. Uh, I bet you we'll find a few. Absolutely, Justin. The beach is beautiful without a doubt here, but to me, with a hunting and fishing background, there's nothing prettier than this yeah. marsh. It's full of wildlife, uh, full of fish, uh, unbelievable. Yeah. Just unbelievable beauty. We, we shut down we shut down well outside the flat because it's just amazing if you have fish in there they're they can be very touchy so we're gonna slip in there just with the push pole and start easing down the shoreline despite the morning's perfect conditions and stealthy approach it's a challenge to see these reds before they spook come on We started off with perfect blue skies today, and now the day's gone on, we've got a little cloud cover moved in. I can't think of a time when we're sight fishing anything that we get excited about some cloud cover. And this is certainly not one of those situations where we would get excited about cloud cover. There are so many fish up here on this flat. 
we're just blowing them out because we can't see them until we get right on top of them. But it seems like the sun's poked out a little better right now, so hopefully we'll see a few of these fish before they see us. Fortunately, the clouds hold off and their luck begins to change. Oh, God! Oh, yes! That was cool. <laughs> Dang! He ain't that big, but he's funky. Oh, man, I tell you what, that sun is starting to poke back out, and these redfish are excited. Oh, yeah, that's a beautiful fish. Hey, Steve, give me some. That's a good one to end on right there. Somebody told me that uh, they see more uh, multi-spotted redfish in our area than anywhere else. It's kind of neat to have these because they're, it really makes them all kind of like a fingerprint, you know, unique. It's funny too, when you pick these fish up like this, they almost just relax. It's amazing how in the last half hour they have turned on and we'll just catch one after another. And, uh, you know, I don't know how many fish we saw first thing this morning, but we were seeing piles of fish and just couldn't get them to commit and bite. And then now, it seems like every fish that I dragged that little DOA in front of, they're just jumping on it. And I'm glad they are. Coming up on Chasing the Sun. There we go. There he is. There he is. Goes to show you, no matter what the conditions look like, if you got the time to get out there, get on the water. Boy, it's a cotton mouth too, isn't that his mouth open? I don't know, dude. I ain't playing with him. Reel down to the water until it's ripping dry. Inside you, there's an outside you. A you that takes the road less traveled than the road less traveled. And finds the comforts of home extremely uncomfortable. This is for that you. Beautiful. Best selection, best service, best advice. For 43 years, Half Hitch has given anglers everything they need for a successful day of blue water fishing or fishing the shallow flats of the Florida Panhandle. With six locations along the Emerald Coast, a Half Hitch is never far away. For your latest fishing reports, check out halfhitch.com. Half Hitch, gear up and get out there. We wanted to go where others couldn't. To fish where the fishing is best. We needed an adventure that we couldn't have any other way. If you're a fisherman, you know what we're talking about. Another beautiful morning in Panama City Beach, and Justin heads out with friend and guide, Captain Daniel Snap. All right, Daniel. You say we're gonna ride up here in the corner and start up here. What are we gonna look for? Yeah, we're gonna get up here. We've got a full moon, a lot of extra water in the bay right now. Had a lot of rain, a little bit of front moving through, so we're gonna start targeting these fish right up here next to the mouth of a bayou. The yeah. tide is still going out. It's going to be low and flat here in about another two hours or so. So we're okay. going to start, work the mouth of this bayou, and work the grass line. And uh, we're going to start with some top water. And we'll just work our way down, see what happens, and adjust from there. All right. I like it.
we just come across a little bar. Tide is just about flat, and uh, if there's going to be any fish, you know, hopefully we're going to catch them in this, in this, you know, between the bar and the bank. And of course, we'll do like we did a while ago, work down the bank, and just look for bait and throw amongst those bait and see what happens. We got a lot of wind and a lot of rain just moved through here, and the water's probably kind of dirty. We've got all kinds of reasons why the fishing might be tough, but you know, we said, hey, look, let's go anyway, see what it's like. Sure enough, first thing this morning we get out there, the wind wasn't bad at all. Absolutely beautiful. It was. <laughs> you know, it turned out way better than I thought it would. There he there is. is. There we go. Golly. There we go. All right. Beautiful red. All right, man. We're on the board. Yeah, we are. A lot of these fish, you can see right here on this side, he's got the old traditional one yep. spot, what everybody's used to seeing, especially on tailing fish. And you flip this little guy around and look at him. Just beautiful. All right, well, you know what? I think we're on to something. Oh, yeah. Let's get him Let's back in the water. Let's put him back in the water and see if that was an accident or if we're really starting to figure him oh, out. Yeah. There we go. Hey, he's ready to go. Drumming, drumming, drumming. Uh-huh. Beautiful. Another quality little fish. Goes to show you, no matter what the conditions look like, if you got the time to get out there, get on the water. What's so nice about this is, you know, you come out in Panama City and, you know, there's always some banks and some areas that will accommodate, whether it's windy or, you know, different conditions and You're stuff. Up. And, you know, once you learn it or you get hooked up with a guide, make some calls to the local tackle shops, mm -hmm. get your information, you can go out and really put together a good plan. Regardless of weather, just this morning, we lucked out. You're, uh, uh, it, was, it was beautiful. Part of the fun of backwater fishing is never knowing what will bite. That was a nice flounder. <laughs> hey, variety, man. Hey, that's another fine eating fish in the flats right there. <laughs> He's letting you know about it. I know. Not for sure. He's worried. He's biting them teeth. Yeah, I tell you, you keep your finger clear of them teeth right there. They're like a pair of wire cutters, and he will chomp. Oh, yeah. He also floats like a balloon, watch this. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's a cottonmouth, too. Isn't that his mouth open? I don't know, dude. I ain't playing with him. A lizard fish. I will oh. say this is not a trophy lizard fish, no, you know. No, this is on the smaller side. Every time I tell a story, see so you hook a fish. Well, tell so. me another no, story, no. Stop. I got another one, so when you get that one in, Wolf, I'll tell you. All right, good. Beautiful, beautiful speckled trout. All right, Daniel, thank you so much for an awesome morning. You know, that was a kind of win as planned. We got out here early, tried to get a topwater bite. Right, they cool. would come up, they were they were showing interest, but they wouldn't finish the deal. So, I mean, that worked out great though. Like you said, we swap over something below the surface, started catching redfish immediately, and uh, hey, can't complain about that. Yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah. And now the wind's starting to pick up, so it's time to go grab some lunch and uh, get out of here. Coming up on Chasing the Sun. I mean, that's an eight pounder if I've ever seen one. Yeah, and take two of them. <laughs> what we do is after that reel comes in here, we get service, we're gonna totally disassemble it. And then from there, we're gonna run through the four stage ultrasonic cleaner. With a spread tail, he's right about 20 in. But like you're saying, you pinch that tail and nice. that three quarters yeah, inch over. Yeah, now he's 28. Yeah. Heist Augury is the oldest family-owned clothing store in Bay County. Founded by High Waste Team in 1969 and still providing the best customer service. Heist Augury is now 9,000 square feet of the best brands for all your work, play, social, or sporting requirements. Select from a huge assortment of Columbia, Guy Harvey, AFCO, Costa Del Mar, Yeti, Vineyard Vines, Berry Top Cider, and more. Visit us at our Pier Park location on Panama City Beach to see the latest in men's and women's apparel. Or give us a call, 850-235-1177. This is why we are obsessed.
success. On the Yuzuri, baby! It's the Mag Darter, man! The crystal 3D shrimp. Here we go! There he is! Big bull! Big bull! Love that popper in the side of his mouth. Look at oh, this fish. Crush that Yozuri. You know, I'm a huge believer in this Yozuri pink. I'm telling you, this is the fluorocarbon of all fluorocarbon. Skipping across the surface, that Yozuri. There he is, nice bite. Oh my gosh, look at him. Yeah, baby, Yozuri. I don't go fishing without him. This is the new Beastmaster 9000. Ooh. This is hard work. More power, better durability, and heat dispersion. Oh, tripled up. Incredible winding speed. An amazing 250 pounds of max winding power. It's the ultimate toy. And with the new planetary gear system, that equals durability. Incredible winding speed. Yeah, that's a giant. 55 pounds of drag. The Beastmaster 9000 is now a part of my fishing arsenal. Hey guys, my name's Ron Bark. I'm the service manager here at Half Itch Tackle, and I want to show you what happens when we bring a reel in to get serviced. What we do is after that reel comes in here to get serviced, we're going to totally disassemble it. And then from there, we're going to run it through our fourth stage ultrasonic cleaner. First stage is ultrasonic wash. It's done with, with a detergent. It's all EPA, environmentally safe. Sure. All right, we'll run that through uh, for about 10 minutes. We heat this up to about 140 degrees. We found that at, at over 140 degrees, what happens is if you have any graphite com components, uh -huh. it actually starts to bleach the graphite uh, out. Gotcha. So we won't run it any hotter than sure. that. Okay, after it goes through that, that uh, 10 minutes in ultrasonic clean, it's gonna go through a 10 minute stage in ultrasonic rinse. Okay. And what is that you're rinsing it with? We are rinsing it with strictly filtered fresh water. Okay, good. Nothing, nothing but water. Okay. We're gonna, that, that's gonna dislodge any any more grease, oils left over, and along with the detergents. Okay. That are left over. All right. After that stage, we go through another 10 minute cycle of strictly fresh, clear water. Mm -hmm. We're gonna make sure that everything's gone off of there. And then after that, we're gonna put it through a, a 10 minute cycle at about 110 degrees, and we're gonna blow dry. Get it ready to get reassembled by the technician. That is neat, and I tell you, it is noticeably different what that reel looks like there from when they start. Man, right. that thing looks shiny, it looks new again. Good, that's what we're after. Yeah. I'm here with Fred Myers, one of my close buddies, and uh, we've been fishing together since we were little kids. Yep. And he's one of the top IFA tournament anglers, and uh, he's won nine F IFA tournaments, three IFA championships, yep. a whole bunch of boats. <laughs> yep. And uh, we're gonna come out here and just have fun today, though. No pressure, we're just gonna catch a few redfish. Look how blue its tail is. The right target species. species. I mean, that's an eight pounder if I've ever seen one. Yeah, and take two of them. <laughs> there he is. Golly, did you see that? Look at that. He crushed it right there. There'll be another one right here. And oh, that's a good hit again, right? Like we were just saying. Beautiful fish. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate that bite because you're your brother out there, I, I lost him. Fred, so for the people watching the show, when they come to Panama City Beach, what are some things that they can look for uh, to go try to catch redfish here? Yeah, in, in Panama City, I grew up here fishing, so I kind of had the advantage because uh, it's clear water. When you have clear water, you see the fish yeah. a lot, so it's beautiful. Um, however, sometimes, it, it, you know, the fishing, uh, that might not be at your advantage. So the number one thing when you're fishing clear water like Panama City Beach is get a setup that will allow you to cast as far away from that boat as you can. This is a better fish. Yeah. Now, Fred, if we were tournament fishing, I'd have done scoop that dude in the net. But you know what? 
That's one nice thing about getting out to do this every once in a while. We just get to come enjoy the day, catch these guys. And you know what? If he did come off right here beside the boat, <laughs> I it, would, hit you. it wouldn't hurt our feelings. Fishing. This fish is not going to be close to 27, but um, basically it's critical. I mean, people think, you know, I get all kinds of information when I'm fishing tournaments and when people say, hey, I caught a, a big old bunch of redfish. See, I'm looking for 27 inch fish. This fish with a pinched tail is barely even 21 inches. With a spread tail, he's right about 20 inches. Yeah. But when you pinch that tail down. He's barely over 21 inches. He's almost 21. You know, people say, oh man, I'm on them, I'm on them. But when you put them on this board, I'm looking for fish down here. <laughs> That's down right. Down here. That... But for, for the sake of measuring, you know, a lot of people, this is 27 right here. They put that fish on there and go, all right, he's just inside the slot. But like you're saying, you pinch that tail and now uh -oh. he's three quarters yeah, of an now inch over. Almost 28. Yeah. So you gotta be careful in these redfish tournaments, you understand how you're measuring these fish. Coming up on Chasing the Sun. That's a sign of a good, healthy ecosystem. We got jumbos, we got mediums, we got smalls. You now when you put somebody on the time clock, the day goes very, very fast. So um, you gotta fish the conditions that are dealt that day. Touch the earth, yeah, it glows, sunsets are pretty shows. White sands, turquoise waters, and endless possibilities. Plan your spring escape today at visitpanamacitybeach.com. Visit Panama City Beach. Half Hitch Tackle. Get out there. Shimano. Focus your passion. Jackson Kayaks. Four Anglers by Anglers. Yeti Coolers. Built for the wild. And by AFCO, American Fishing Tackle Company. When visiting Panama City Beach, you can find just about any seafood dish your heart desires. Boondocks, located in the Backwater Bay just outside of town, serves up a local favorite of steamed flounder seasoned with its own special sauces. A must-have after a long day on the water. Oh, there we go. Oh, man, look at that. Yeah. All right. Thank, Thank you so much. much. Let's talk about redfish. Redfish are something that you and I have put a lot of years and a lot yeah. of time into chasing. Um, I know you as a tournament pro, that style of fishing differs a lot from what me as a guide would do day in, day out. Totally what is a, yeah, what, explain to us your tournament style of fishing. The biggest thing on tournament fishing is, is you're on a time clock. Um, you don't get to pick the tide, you don't get to pick the weather. Um, it's just, it's, you know, you hear all the time, oh, I catch this size redfish, it's gonna win the tournament all the time. And, you know, when you put somebody on the time clock, um, the day goes very, very fast. Uh -huh. And uh, so um, you gotta fish the conditions that are dealt that day. One other thing that I really wanna congratulate the tournament world on is y'all's stance on conservation. Yeah. Uh, um, tell me what, what y'all do in the, I mean, these are all live, release tournaments yeah on well number one if you if you have a fish that dies uh -huh. one fish we're fishing we, we can only bring back two fish we get a penalty 
if one fish dies of half a pound. Wow. If both fish dies, the tournament gives us a two pound penalty. And that pretty what much takes you out of the Takes product. us out yeah. of it. So it's very important, part of this, the, the deal is fish care. It's very important to catch and release because you don't know where these fish will go. Yeah. And, and in our base system, we have a pass, but our pass is pretty small. We're fishing the same fish year after year. So right. as those fish are extracted out of the, out of the, out of the estuary here, um, it really puts a hurting on the fishing. Redfish in Panama City Beach anyways is a year-round fishery. It's something that we all use. Yes. Uh, it is very important and, and I like I always tell my clients on the boat, I say, those fish are worth a lot more yeah. to us back in the water. Catching them versus yeah. putting them in the cooler. That's right. That's a sign of a good healthy ecosystem. We got jumbos, we got mediums, we got smalls. Hey, I'll take them. That's why this area was so great for the redfish yeah. tournaments. Um, it was an untouched area yep. that had not had tournaments in it, and um, it was great, it, it, and it's still great. Uh, it's just that we need to really protect it and take You're care right. of it. Yeah, right. I'm with you. I want to make sure it stays like that yep. so our kids can catch them yep. just like we are right now. Yep. If you want more information on Panama City Beach, go to visitpanamacitybeach.com or find us on Facebook.